Hey. It's... It's been a while, and not for the lack of trying, either. Alexa, show them the videos that I tried to record last year. Very nice. Shall we compare, mother? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> As a woman, I find it extremely rude and discriminatory how we can't grow facial hair because I would love to have a beard like Seneca Crane's. I just realized I've been recording and streaming at the same time. Wow, we stand a Seneca Crane beard. God, you gotta tape them, at least make them secure. Like, look at this bounce. Hang on, let me just scooch my script across so I can actually read it properly. Cause shock horror, I have a script. Prepared? Me? Never. I suppose it's fitting that I post a video of me getting drunk and then dip for over a year. <laughs> Midlife crisis at 19. That's just pretty rough. <laughs> but yeah, things look a bit different around here. You may notice a new icon and a new channel name and I'm older and have one new grey hair. It's like... here, I think? Like right here? You probably can't see it, but it, it's fucking there. I know it's there. So I thought I'd drop in and give a little life update and a fun little speed paint to go along with it. I actually recorded this painting back in July last year and wanted to edit and post it and I don't know why I didn't. I guess maybe I wanted to get all the others in the set painted first and post them around the same time, but obviously that never happened either. This is actually an artwork about a fanfiction I'm writing. I doubt many of you all know this unless you've found my channel through Wattpad or know me personally, but I've actually been working on an Outlast fanfiction for the last... five years? <laughs> I know, that's a really, really long time. But in case you haven't guessed, I procrastinate. A lot. <laughs> And I actually scraped the first draft and started rewriting it towards the end of 2018. I wanted to create a number of artworks for each chapter of the game, so like the mail war, the administration block, and this one is for the sewers. I've always liked drawing things to go along with whatever I'm writing, and it's a fun way to divide up the sections of the story. The guy is obviously Miles Upshur, the silent, brooding protagonist, and the girl on the right is my character Carmen Murphy, or Mom and Curfee for those in the know. <laughs> She's a childhood friend of Miles's, and in my fanfiction she accompanies him to Mount Massive. I had a ton of fun messing around with the lighting for this painting. I don't usually try anything super experimental. I'm a very basic artist, um, it's usually like three-quarter view, um, lighting coming from somewhere up here or up here, um, portraits, nothing super fancy, but I wanted to try something like, um, that looked like those night vision settings you get on certain cameras. It's kind of spooky and kind of cool. I did struggle a bit getting the lighting to look right, so on a separate screen I had a picture of Shane Madey to use as a reference. <laughs> of course. But where have I been for the last year? Well, a lot of things have changed for me in that time now that I sit back and think about it. I spent most of last year working my way through the first year of an English degree at university. It was quite nice being able to go back to studying after my gap year in 2020 and do something other than working, but I didn't enjoy the degree as much as I thought I would and transferred to an anthropology major and a history minor this year. This was super fun at first because my anthropology course in semester one was focused on witchcraft magic and rituals surrounding the dead. The tutor was super great and non-judgmental and I found the content absolutely fascinating. I mean, our field trips were to cemeteries, one of which holds the graves of suffrage leader Kate Shepard. How cool is that? Since then, I've had several experiences, which may or may not be ghosts, but it's whatever. Unfortunately, I realised slightly too late that I wasn't actually all that interested in the history courses that I was taking, and now I'm not really sure I even want to pursue my degree because I'm struggling to find the motivation to keep up with assignments. That's totally okay. University isn't for everyone. I think part of it may be the weird pressure I put on myself as the gifted kid at school. And I'm realising that while degrees are extremely useful and you should at least try university or other tertiary education, it's not the end of the world if that's not the path you want to take. 
Some people just aren't suited to that kind of study, and that's okay. I also got a promotion last year. Exciting, right? Moving up the sewer ladder that is working in a supermarket. <laughs> you might know that I met my long-suffering boyfriend Wade at the supermarket. He left last November and I was asked to fill his position as a checkout supervisor. Fun fact, this is actually my uh, supervisor shirt because I have a shift um, after I finish this video. I'm not a very confrontational person, so I wasn't super sure about taking on the role because it means dealing with all the assholes who come through, but they needed the help and I just happened to be the most convenient person at the time. And it means I get to do the closing calls at the end of the night. Good evening customers, the time is now 9.45 and our store will be closing in 15 minutes. To assist our staff, please finalise your purchases and make your way through checkout or self-checkout. Thank you for shopping at Fresh Count and Save. I actually quite enjoy it outside of the ridiculous amount of paperwork I now have to fill out. I'm the youngest supervisor by quite a bit, but somehow I've taken on this weird protective mum personality when it comes to the younger stuff. Like just the other week I had one of them say that it's like that scene from Mean Girls. I'm not a regular supervisor. I'm a cool supervisor. Which is like the biggest compliment you could have given me. Now that my pay's gone up, oh, 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 this is outdated, this part of the script. I, I will get onto this shortly and you'll see why I'm so excited about it in a minute. I also started back at marching, which I haven't done since I was nine. Marching is a uniquely Oceanian sport, which can really only be described as an odd sort of mix between military marching drills and cheerleading or dance. It's basically just fancy walking. You might have even seen the Lockheel marching team performing at the Edinburgh Tattoo until 2019. I personally marched from 2007 to 2011, when the season was unfortunately cut short by a very large earthquake. I'm still friends with one of the girls on my team then, and we actually ended up working together for a little while. I wanted to go back for a while, but couldn't find the time because I used to play football four times a week, and it is quite pricey between the fees and competitions and paying for new boots, but now I'm out of school and can afford to pay for it myself. So I joined a new team at the very end of last year, all excited to restart on the second half of the season. And then COVID hit. Again. I only marched once last season. And it was a disaster. So bad, in fact, that I almost had a panic attack because I hadn't marched in 11 years and only had four trainings to learn an entire drill, came off the field and then burst into tears. Great stuff. But now I'm back, I'm not too traumatized, and I've got a sick bayonet to use in our display, which isn't here right now, but I promise you I do have it. I might do a video once we get back into the competitive season in October, but it depends on if I can make some interesting content out of it. All of our training is just drills which are quite boring to watch, and I don't want to go sharing anyone's faces without their permission. We'll see what happens. Now for probably the biggest change for me and the one I'm honestly most excited about. You may have noticed that I'm not in my usual filming space. And this room is far too tidy and open for me. <laughs> That's because, as of filming this, I moved out of home a week ago. Which is actually what the last bit of my script was referring to before because I was like, oh yeah, like, you know, maybe in the future we'll be seeing a new filming space, who knows, I'm on the hunt for a rental, we'll see what happens. I'm here. It happened. I didn't update the script. That shows you how long it's been since I've actually been planning this video. But anyway, I'm now living with Wade, who you'll know from my drunk phasmophobia video, and even though I treated him appallingly in that. Come back here, you bitch. Welcome to the stream, not you. I don't like you. We're somehow still together and decided that the next step in our relationship was to move in together. Funny thing is, I threw out a joke about it in 2020 and he didn't totally reject the idea. We actually started looking for places back in January, but had no luck until a few weeks ago. The first flat we applied for, we went to a viewing, submitted an application within two or three hours, and then literally five hours after that we were rejected. So the whole thing felt kind of pointless, but such is life, it happens. A few other places we applied for we just never heard back about, which is always a good sign. 
and others were let out before we had a chance to apply and others we were just straight up rejected for. It got really, really frustrating, especially when we found out that while landlords aren't actually supposed to reject you based on your age, because that counts as discrimination, if you're a young couple looking to move out of home, it's really fucking hard. Because everyone just kind of assumes that because you're young, you're going to be like every other young person and throw parties every weekend and trash the place and it's just going to be a nightmare for the landlord. So basically they just straight up reject you. Pretty sick. Anyway, I wasn't actually intending on moving into this place specifically. It's a 1930s house converted into two smaller units and Wade and I were interested in the other one because it had a spare room that we could use as like an office space or something like that. I went along for viewing and while that unit had already been let out a couple of days before, what I didn't know was that the property manager was actually a friend of my mum's and she suggested that we apply for this place instead. I didn't have my hopes up but she fast tracked our application and we got confirmation of our tenancy literally two days before I was due to fly out to Wellington to help out with the World Scholars Cup round. I got back on the Sunday and pretty much immediately started shifting my stuff out of home. It was very, very rushed and we're still in the process of moving some stuff across to the flat, but it feels so good to finally have some independence. And it's something that we've wanted for a really, really long time. This is a temporary lease since I'm in Christchurch and like every other building, this one is badly earthquake damaged and due to be demolished in May, but for now, it's my new home. And I'm not going to complain, because it means that we get super cheap rent, which is pretty fucking good. I should also mention that we got really lucky with knowing a property manager. At the moment, the rental market is super competitive and not everyone is fortunate enough to have connections that help them get into a place. Especially when it comes to young people, which is really shitty considering shelter is literally one of the most basic human rights and you shouldn't have a monopoly on that just because you have money but that's another rant for another day and I have a ton of respect for anyone who is willing to take rejection after rejection just to find a place to live. But basically, no more cramped bedroom videos for me. That is crazy to say as I feel like disorganized chaos and tripping over things on my way to my chair was part of my brand, but hey. It's a new era, and it had to happen eventually. So yeah, that's where I've been. I've had a bit of a refresh and a rebrand, and I'm hoping to start uploading again. To be totally honest, I've missed it. I love making videos because it's such a creative outlet, and it can be as complicated or as simple as I want, and allows me to get out all my chaotic energy. I've got so much planned, including sewing, art, gaming and of course my usual zero fucks given content and I'm so, so excited to share it with you. I also want to start streaming but that's dependent on my schedule which is very weird given the time differences between New Zealand and the rest of the world and I'll have to work out the optimal time to stream that doesn't impact my sleep too much. But anyway, I will see you soon in another video but until then, 